There is no waste. There is only resources. We make different uh, structures than, than nature is used to, but can we try and emulate the way in which nature functions? The circular mindset squeeze every ounce of value out of the energy sources. So we may have a primary energy source and all of the, the byproducts or secondary energy sources. How can we use those as much and as often and as frequently and as, and as fully as possible? Nordic Energy Research travelled through the Nordics, talking to thought leaders and exploring the potential of district heating and cooling and the circular economy with Nordic solutions to global challenges. District heating is very important in Nordic countries. When we are able to decarbonize this kind of big systems, we are able to contribute massively into the carbon emission reduction. It is a system that enables the city to, to use its resources and uh, the energy markets in the most efficient way possible. The economies of scale idea of having district heating to, to many different uh, houses rather than each house or each building having its own furnace, its own heating source, gives very, very large uh, effects. We are also connecting with the heat network, different type of customer needs. One is needing heating, one is needing cooling. Also during the winter time in Nordics that's happening because we have data centers, we have grocery stores. When we have district cooling, it allows us to take that energy from the district cooling system and hence transfer it into the district heating system through heat pumps. And of course that draws a lot of benefits that we can generate two valuable services at the same time. Basic idea behind district heating and cooling is that it allows you to kind of recycle the heat. The heat source themselves, they can be like excess heat from the industry, renewable heat sources, heat out of the oceans, lakes, rivers, geothermal heat, even ambient air can be used as a heat source. Every day the citizens give us their waste and we turn that into energy and it's vast amounts of energy. We produce enough energy uh, to meet the, the energy need of 90,000 household use of electricity and heat. Turning an environmental problem into good clean energy, it's a huge benefit for the citizens of Copenhagen. In Stockholm, it's a system that uh, draws energy from waste incineration combined heat and power. So we incinerate the household waste and uh, other waste that otherwise would go in landfills. We emit CO2 and that is our next target. We want to treat that as well so that we can be, become carbon neutral and probably also carbon negative. You can see our closest neighbor is less than 200 meters away. We are less than two kilometers away from the Queen's Palace. So we needed to be a part of the city, inviting people in because we need a plant like this in a modern city to treat the modern consumption. 55% of the energy is coming from the solar panels. We have 1,600 households on the grid. This plant is consumer owned. So if you buy a house in Marstel, you own a part of the plant. And until 2014, it was the, the biggest solar panel for district heating. But now others have got the same good idea because it's cheap energy. So now we are one of the smaller plants. <laughs> mm. In Torsan, there is already a district heating company with maybe 1,500 households. And heat pumps in general are replacing oil plants. There are currently three main uh, sources uh, of energy for the district heating. The uh, municipal incinerator, the main electricity plant. And we provide excess heat uh, from uh, the biogas plant into their grid. The plans are to have big tanks where you get uh, electricity from windmills and also uh, to have heat pumps exchanging the heat from the sea and then also supplementing the heat system so that we will be able to have all the energy for the district heating from renewable energy. The CHP is combined heat and power production. So it means that in the same combustion power plant you produce both electricity and heat at the same time. And the efficiency is something like 90% in a process like that. If I would build a CHP plant right now, I would make it as flexible as possible. To really balance other renewables such as wind and solar. Digitalization is, is one of the mega trends, like the urbanization. People are moving into cities. We are needing more 
IT capacity in a cloud, which is practically a data center. We are utilizing the excess heat from the data center, but we are also, by doing that, having system with several different locations for the heat production. We need to have more intelligence to run the system, to operate and optimize the distribution and also the production, and by connecting the customers, providing better living environment, more constant temperature inside, and also utilizing the accumulated energy from the buildings where people are living, and the office space and so on. So it helps us to circulate the energy around the city while we have a highly intelligent IT systems to operate. It's estimated that around about half of the ways in which we can reduce our CO2 footprint is actually through energy-related activities. And the other half is actually estimated to come from circular economy-related initiatives. We try to look around and see the needs of the local society, not in terms of only heating, but can we in some way invest in the local society? Iceland is absolutely on its way to circular solutions. We have uh, companies working on green industrial parks. So like with power companies, they have the resource parks where you can uh, work with this methodology of creating uh, circular solutions, circular systems. Waste from one company is uh, used as a resource for the next one. We have created uh, the on-power geothermal park next to our power plant in Hedlisheide that is suitable for different types of production processes. The idea of industrial symbiosis, as we, we often call it, is a really nice and very specific way of thinking circularity. One stakeholder's waste can be the other stakeholder's resource, um, and all of a sudden, uh, waste isn't waste anymore. One pioneer was very much forward thinking, Albert Albertsson at, uh, at HS Orca. And he and HS Orca, they pioneered this kind of thinking in their resource park. Now energy companies in, in Iceland are uh, using opportunities in circular thinking. Interdisciplinary cooperation is of great importance. I saw there is much more in the geothermal fluid or water, if you will, than power or heat energy. The best example of that is the Blue Lagoon. In the lagoon, you can, if you go there, dip in, you see a greenish sludge on the stones, a healing effect on your skin. With these algae and the silica, we have now a cosmetic industry. Collaboration means we need to dare to open up some of our activities, some of our thoughts, maybe even some of our business. But uh, by sharing, you often actually end up with more. Most of the technology that is needed is already invented. We can optimize a system, but in order to realize that, we need the players to get on board and to start implementing it and, and maybe make some compromises as well along the way. In the beginning phase, you need to have a major development of the city and or major buildings, major users that you can connect to so that you can finance the system. What is needed is that the policy makers and the decision makers in the cities have a long-term view. And they have to make the regulation and the environment lucrative for investment. And we have to allow construction inside the cities for the different kind of modern industries like the data centers. Otherwise, we are locating our data centers in locations where you can only call to the air and not to utilize the energy efficiently. In order to move to the next level, I, I think investing in scientific research in general and kind of creating your own scientific community in your country, very important. We have to change our mindset. We have to revive the spiritual contact between man and nature. I look at whatever comes out of ground as a valuable resource. It's a wonderful gift of nature.